Well, hello everyone and welcome to Uncivil Law. For today's video, we are going to respond to a incident in which a judge walked out of a criminal case in a way that appears to have denied the defendant due process, or at least so I am told. This clip has gone pretty viral and apparently the judge reversed themselves because bad luck, which, you know, good on the judge, I guess, when you realize you've made a mistake. But we're going to watch this thing and see how it went. So here, what I understand happened, the sort of highlights that's been described to me, is that this case has been going on and was supposed to be three weeks. It was supposed to be a three-week criminal trial. And apparently the state has consumed all of it. They've consumed all three weeks. And so the judge, frustrated, said to the defense that you can only have five minutes to do an entire cross-examination of one of the state's key witnesses, which sounds pretty sus. That doesn't sound like something that should happen. But we're going to watch this thing for as much context as we can have. And we're going to try to make an independent determination about whether the judge did the right thing or did a bad thing. So we're going to watch this thing. So we'll just set up the parameters of this in advance so that you can uh, judge along with me. Uh, first parameter is, of course, the defendant has due process. And more importantly, in a criminal case, perhaps, is the specific right to confront the witnesses against you. So you have the right to do some cross-examination. Now, the, the, the judge does have the right to control their courtroom and does have the right to manage time and does have the right to even limit the scope of questioning. But, of course, that right is not an unlimited right. Particularly, of course, as I mentioned in the criminal case, because of all those constitutional concerns I just mentioned. So, you know, if the defense was, you know, effing around and finding out, then that's one thing. But if the state, if the judge was just frustrated because things weren't going the way he wanted in sort of a general way, particularly when the state is the one that's being the aggravating force, then, you know, blaming the defense, not so much. So we're going to figure out where on this continuum we lie. So let's go ahead and get started. This is a 38 minute video. We're going to watch this and try to figure out who's right, who's wrong. Let's go ahead and watch this for all the glory it has. All right, you can be seated. We're on the record. Records show the presence of counsel and the defendant. The jury is absent. Um, Mr. Jetty or Ms. Ms. Uh, Hunley, what I need to know what remains of the state's case in chief. We're currently in the cross-examination of uh, Detective Barba. And after De Detective Barba, we have Border Patrol agent Tersi, We should be quick. I mean, this is from the state's perspective, quick from our perspective. And then we have the finishing up of dispatch witness on Friday and Detective Ienza. And that's it. Thank you. Um, what is the defense anticipating of its case in terms of how much time you're going to need? Your Honor, we're hoping to get through it fairly quickly. We have Sheriff Hathaway, we have Border Patrol Agent Lyugan, Border Patrol Agent Gorman, and Detective Raul Rodriguez that we anticipate calling, and then possibly the defendant, possibly not. Give me an estimate Time? of how much? Two days. Two days? The way I, I'm just asking. Going, I'd, say, I'd say yes. Well, all right. Um, I'm going to start imposing time limits in this case on direct and cross examinations. Uh, when we, uh, we've been discussing this case. Yeah, okay. That, that's a bit problematic. Like, I'm going to start doing that. That's a bit problematic because, well, the state's had apparently three weeks. Well, both sides have apparently had three weeks of unchallenged time. And to say, okay, I'm going to start doing it now is a problem. It's also specifically a problem because we're specific, we're in the middle of one witness, right? The This is apparently the direct has ended of the witness, and we're going to start cross. So you want to impose time limits going forward, including cross, while you're in the middle of the current witness. That sounds that sounds problematic. Yeah, that sounds that sounds problematic. Yeah, I, I don't know about that one. Leading up to the case and during the trial, uh, counsel informed me, advised me, that this case would take three weeks. Um, I have to rely on what you tell me. I don't know who the witnesses are going to be, what they're going to testify to, or what the duration of time is going to be. I was told it was going to be three weeks. Today is three weeks, right? Today is three weeks. We started on March 21st. 
Today's three weeks, and the state's still in this case. As I've also been monitoring and asking counsel for how we're doing, how we're progressing on this case, so that I could decide whether and determine whether I needed to exercise any authority over the pace of the case. I was informed uh, by the state that there was a possibility that they would rest last Friday. Here we are on Thursday. Uh, the state's not going to rest today. And um, if we continue, then the state will maybe rest at the close of business on Friday. I assume Detective Ainza is going to be a lengthy witness. Um, so clearly, we are behind schedule. This case is going to go to the jury next week. It's going to go to the jury next Thursday. Mm. And I'm going to move this case so that that happens. Um, and I'm going to start imposing time limits. Um, this line of cross-examination. Okay, that's a little bit concerning. Although, to be fair to the judge, he did ask the defense how much time they needed. And they said two days. So, if it's Thursday now, and he's thinking to himself about how much, how much the state needs, and so they're going to If he makes them close, say, for example, he makes them close on Friday... And this defense has already said, well, all we need is two days. That would take you to Monday, Tuesday. So, you know, that we're, that I'm going to force you to close. I'm going to force this to go to the jury by not later than Thursday. Not inherently unreasonable at this point. Because he did ask the defense first what they needed. And he said two days. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to hold you that representation. So, like, oh, okay. So, so far, oh, okay. Let's see how it progresses. Of Detective Barba. Tell me what it is. Tell me why it's relevant and what you're trying to do. Are you referring to Ramon talking about to Detective Barb about Ramon? I am. Ramon is somebody who came forward in this case. He made a false report to law enforcement. Law enforcement collected information from Ramon that was verifiably false. Law enforcement failed to exercise any kind of standard of care over this investigation. It shows law enforcement's bias and it shows their ineffectiveness in actually being able to investigate the case. It's crucial to the defense to be able to put on this information. So the line of questioning is basically, well, first of all, Ramon's not a witness, right? Correct. He's not going to testify. Ramon came forward. He gave information. Is the defense point of view an argument that he gave false information, correct? correct. All right. Uh, they looked at Ramon. They decided for whatever reason not to use Ramon, maybe in part because he wasn't an honest witness or he's not available. But so basically what you're trying to prove is that as I understand it, through this cross-examination, is you have a witness who gave false information, he's not being used, and you're just trying to determine that the state didn't adequately investigate his he, false information? That's true. He's also a potential suspect. Judge, anybody who comes forward to put themselves at the scene of the crime should be looked at as a person of interest. We had a witness testify that because Mr. and Mrs. Kelly were at the scene of the crime, they were persons of interest. And All right, slightly overstated by the defense, you know, uh, to be fair. Just because a person is present at the crime scene does not necessarily make them a person of interest, nor necessarily a suspect. Obviously, they could be a witness or even hypothetically just there if somehow they didn't notice. Because what does it mean to be present at the crime scene? What exactly does that mean? Depending on the context, right? So suppose that, you know, a crime happened at, a, I don't know, a grocery store. And suppose that, you know, someone got robbed in the grocery store and someone else is on the complete opposite end of the grocery store and just happens to be there and doesn't have any clue that this is happening, which, you know, fair enough. Maybe that's maybe that's a possibility. Right. Or it's happening in a parking lot, but they don't notice anything happening because it's at one end of the parking lot and they're in another or any number of other scenarios that could potentially occur. So, you know, just because you're present at the crime scene doesn't necessarily mean that you have any connection in any sense to the crime witness or otherwise, because maybe you're just there, depending on what we mean by present. OK, and depending on what we mean by crime scene. And of course, maybe you are maybe you aren't a person of interest because, you know, there's no particular reason to think that you are there. So overstated by the defense, you know, mere presence at a crime scene is not enough. And I would chide you as a judge without more for the same reason I tried the prosecution without more. Mere presence alone is not necessarily anything. You need a little bit more than that to start raising flares. And if you as the defense are going to start offering 
possible alternative suspects, you're going to need a little bit more than the guy was there. The guy was there is not is not going to cut it. And you can't just speculate, you know, no speculation for either side. So no, no speculation for you. So, um, yeah, overstated by the defense. All right. So let's listen to some more. Anybody who puts himself there is a person of interest, if not a potential suspect. Overstated. And we have a right to question the investigation and to challenge them and to get to the bottom of why they didn't pursue other people who are making false reports and maybe potential suspects. Very well. You can do that. Okay. And also, although just because someone made a false report doesn't necessarily mean that they were lying, of course, I should point out, because there's a difference right because false just means not true lying means that i'm doing it with deliberation right i'm trying to deceive that's what makes it a lie knowing mistake and knowing wrongness is what makes it a lie knowing that what i'm telling you is false and with the intent to communicate to intent for you to believe it that's what makes it a lie so again just a a mere false statement is not necessarily indicative of anything either so you know again it might be undue speculation that but this is this is examination is way beyond the scope of the direct exam the officers are the one who said it i i would point out that officers are human beings and sometimes make mistakes too wow i mean yes i mean officers are but officers are officers but they're also human beings an officer might make an honest mistake wow so just saying okay pressing on nation this is uh, evidence that is more properly presented in the defense case in chief you can present that in the defense case in chief if you want we're not going to go into it any further right now it's beyond the scope of the direct examination and it's more evidence that's to be presented in the defense case in chief if you want Fair to enough. present that in the defense case in chief you can do that and if you do that because of the way we've discussed this yesterday in the ruling of the court is that then um, we're going to play the entire video of the interview I don't know. Did you determine how long that's going to take? It's only 20 minutes, Your Honor. 20 minutes. That's good. But that'll come out in your case in chief, and that'll come out of the defense time. I just have to object, Judge. I, I think that's going to cause this to take longer. If we have to recall Detective Barba to go through that, it'll take longer. I'm allowed in cross-examination to exceed the scope of direct. I'm not in any way limited by what the state asks this witness on direct. Okay, that is definitely not necessarily a thing. Depends on your state. Depends on your jurisdiction. And that is not the standard rule. The standard rule is that you are limited by the scope. So maybe Arizona has a special rule or whatever, but she says that she's not limited by scope. Okay. I mean, maybe that's the rule in this jurisdiction. So, hey, the more you know, right? But what she just said is not the standard rule. So that's why I make a note of it, because it caught me a little bit by surprise. And if I have to call this witness... In our case in chief, in chief, then I'm not able to lead the witness, so that's going to take even You'll be able longer. to lead the witness. He's an adverse witness. I'll allow you to lead the witness. Fair enough. The rules provide that if you call a witness and he's associated with an adverse party, the court can allow that. That's Fair the enough. ruling of the court. Let's call the witness to the stand. We're not going to question the witness anymore on this particular. Fair enough. I mean, doesn't sound inherently unreasonable. Um, you know, call them in your case in chief. You want to lead them? Cool. Um, I mean, it's shuffling things around a little bit, but, you know, okay. I mean, that sounds okay so far, right? Because the thing we're trying to reach to is abusive discretion. The judge, does, as I mentioned at the prelude in the opening, the judge does get the ability to manage the witnesses, decide what witnesses will be called, in what order, for how long, of what scope, and so forth and so on. So the judge does have trial management power. And so, like, okay, you can't do it here, but you can do it here. See, see, you know, it, is that wrong? Maybe it's wrong, but abusive discretion requires a bit more. So doing all right so far. Let's see how it progresses on. The point, you have five more minutes with this witness on cross-examination. 
Judge, I, I have to object. This witness is very crucial to the defense. I've never been limited to the lead detective. This is the witness who's supposed to be the lead detective. I've never been limited to just five minutes of cross-examination. And this witness testified to all sorts of involvement in this case. Yeah. This is one of the defense's main witnesses that we have to get to. Judge, limiting me to five minutes of cross-examination with this witness violates... Mr. Kelly's constitution. You now have four minutes. Call it. Ooh. Yeah, that's that's a little bit hard to defend on the reasonableness. Um, that that's a little bit hard to defend. Yeah. Uh, okay. So even if I can limit the scope of the questioning, because I'm going to allow you to bring it up in your own case in chief, so no harm, no foul. <laughs> right, but even if I can limit the scope to limit me to five minutes, and then he punishes her by making what is a pretty right, reasonable you. objection. You know, it's like, hey, you know, just, you know, FYI. Oh, is the court back in the uh, Daybell case? I thought they were done for the day. Um. Okay, Uh. the court uh, is back in Daybell, so I don't know what to do now. I guess we'll press on. Um, cause I can't switch between the only other thing I can do is switch back and I, I, I don't know what to do. Um, and now I fucked this up completely because now I've had an existential crisis. Um, all right. Let's press on. Let's press on. Um, I've completely lost my train of thought. So yeah, that doesn't really make sense. Uh, let's listen to some more. Witness. Make a bill. Do we need to make a bill? I don't know what that means. Let's just. He yes. Please okay. Please so the help. other attorney says, let's make a bill. And she says, I don't know what that means. And neither do I. And then she describes it. And the witness, the attorney says, oh, you mean make a proffer, which just means I'm going to, I'm going to offer what I think they would have testified to. That's what it means. Right. So that's standard, right? I want to make a record of what I think it would have shown, you know, for the benefit of the court of appeals. So fair enough. All right, let's press on. Have a seat. Can I get the whiteboard, Validia? Please have a seat. I remind every witness who appears after they've appeared on a prior date, you're still under oath. Okay. All right? We need the jury, Your Honor. <laughs> Good point. Bring in the jury. That would be helpful. That would be helpful if we had the jury here during the questioning. That that would probably be a good thing to do. All right. Let's you know. Let's bring the jury. That'd be helpful. Oh man.
We ride. Please be seated. The records show the presence of all the jurors' counsel and the defendant. Juror number four, I had a conversation with your point of contact uh, from your employment. Uh, she's very accommodating. The clerk is going to work out the details. I don't anticipate a problem. All right. All right. Um, witness is still under oath, and you can continue with your cross-examination. Thank you. Good morning. Detective Bar So he says continue with your cross. So has there been a cross before this or not? Because people were saying there was no cross, so... So is there cross or not cross? So how much cross has there been up to this point? Because people were saying there was no cross, but he says continue with cross. So is that a misspeak or do people misunderstand what's happening here? It matters in terms of like the legal analysis about what's going on. So, uh, uh, all right, let's press on, I guess. But I'm going to just have a look at a very basic map, okay? And I want you to help me put some things on this map, okay? You were at the house. This is Mr. Kelly's house, let's say, all right? Sure. You are aware that the body of the victim was discovered to the east of the house, correct? Yes, ma'am. So body's over here. And this distance from the body to the house, that's about 115 yards. Is that correct? I didn't do the measurement, so I wouldn't know the measurement. Is that approximately right? Sure. Okay, and this is north, this is south, so down here is the border wall, okay? And would you agree, I know you didn't do the measurement, but that distance as the crow flies, that's about one and a half miles, is that correct? Again, More or I, less? Sure. I know you didn't do the measurements, but it's pretty far, right? There's a now, better way I to ask, ask that. You, Let's say I'm a witness in this case. So let's say I come forward and I make a statement to you. Can you see this okay? Mm -hmm. If you can go towards the front of your... All right. There we go. Better? Yep. All right. So let's say I'm a witness in this case and I come forward and I tell you that I was standing right behind the victim when he was shot and the house was on my left. That would put me to the west, right? That's where I would be if I told you I was facing south and the house was on my left. Would you agree that would put me out here? Yes. And what if I came forward and I told you when this happened, I was 10 yards away? Local admin says I wouldn't trust the connotations of the word the judge is using. I mean, if I am judging this situation, if I'm commentating on the situation, I would like my judgment to be accurate. And so I heard the judge say something and I'm like, wait a second, what is true? Because it matters as I'm trying to adjudicate this, you know, because how much cross has the person had already? How, how much has there been? It matters because when the judge says you can have five minutes, is that reasonable or unreasonable? Because again, it's abusive discretion analysis. It's an abusive discretion analysis. So knowing how much cross-examination there's been is material to me trying to trying to judge the situation. So, and I can only rely on what I know and all I can know is what I hear. And so like, what do you want from me, right? So, yeah. From the house. That would be inconsistent with the facts that you observed, right? Well, direction and distance is subjective. I mean, I don't... Well, think... if I say I'm facing south and the house is to my left, Let I'm the facing finish, the border Let wall. Let the witness finish his answer. You can answer. Direction and distance is subjective. Um, for example, if I'm out in the wilderness and I don't have an idea of where it's north, or uh, I'm just going to guess. <clears throat> okay. But let's say I'm pretty good with distance, and I tell you I'm facing south and the house is to my left, and I'm 10 yards away from the house, and I'm pretty good with distance. 
That's inconsistent with the facts that you observed. Is that right? If you're good with distance and you have knowledge of um, northwest, east, then that would be a correct statement. Okay. And let's say I tell you that I'm looking at the border wall and that it's two football fields away. If I tell you that, that's inconsistent with the facts also, right? Yes. What if I tell you that the shots, as I'm standing here, are coming from my right? Shots are coming from over here. That's what I tell you. That's inconsistent with the facts of this case also, correct? Yes. What if I tell you that there's a horse over here? Well, there we go. <laughs> In between me and where the shots are coming from, and that that horse got shot in this incident. That's also inconsistent with the facts, is that right? Right. And what if I also tell you that while I'm standing right behind this person, the victim who gets shot, he falls over backwards and lands on his back. That's also inconsistent with the facts of this case, correct? And again, the facts are how the body was located or? The body was located on face down, correct? Correct. There's no- So there was prior cross, but this is the entirety of recross? Then a limitation on recross makes much more logical sense. Because recross, by its nature, should be limited to the scope of redirect, which should be narrow in and of itself. So a limitation on recross sounds much more reasonable than a limitation on cross. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, okay. Evidence that you saw that anybody rolled this person over, is that right? Again, I didn't go to the scene. Um, I was not part of picking up the body, so any manipulation or the lack of manipulation, I wouldn't be able to testify. To. But you do know that the body was located face down, right? That's correct. Okay. And if a witness tells you this person fell over backward and landed on his back, and that's where he lay, that would be inconsistent. Okay, Castro, you say the prosecution was not limited on a redirect. Do you know that for a fact? that the prosecution was not limited on a redirect, because that doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense that the prosecution wouldn't be limited on redirect. That doesn't make any sense. The scope of redirect is to, is to deal with things that were brought up on cross. It's not a second direct. So it doesn't make any sense that redirect is unlimited. That, does, that doesn't make any sense. This was just cross. See, people disagree. People disagree. Some people are saying it's recross. Some people say there was cross. Some people say there wasn't cross. So, like, what do you want me to do? This is this is my problem. This is my problem. Without an understanding of the facts, I can't critique it. Because I have to make the correct legal analysis. And without a correct understanding of the facts, I can't, I can't adjudicate it. Keep watching. So watching is going to clarify this for me? Uh, okay. Prosecution was not limited? That doesn't make any sense. That, that, that makes no sense. I, I, that doesn't make any sense. All right, I'll keep watching. Maybe it'll get clarified, I guess. ...with the facts, right? Right. Unless I need to watch the trial? What do you want me to do? Rewatch the entire trial? I, I was provided this 38 minute clip and I'm trying to figure it out based on a 38 minute clip. I'm 14 minutes into it and I don't understand what's going on. It's cross because the state gets redirect next, but you guys, someone else said it was recross already. So you guys can't decide on what it is. Someone said it was recross. Someone, so, this is the first, so you guys can't agree. You guys can't agree as to what it is. So, I, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this.
somebody rolled that body over after he fell down. Is that right? Well, it, it also goes back to high stress incidents. Um, to my knowledge and the training I've received in high stress incidents, he kind of tend to block specific uh, details of the incidents. Do you think high stress could account for facts like this being so far different from the facts you observed on the ground? Definitely. You think that's high stress could do that? Yes. You would agree that Mr. Kelly would be under a lot of stress during this incident, correct? Sure. So if you're giving this person the benefit of the doubt, then you should give Mr. Kelly the same benefit of the doubt, correct? Well, I'm not giving anybody the benefit of the doubt. I'm just stating what my training and my experience has taught me. You have training and experience regarding false reports also, correct? That's correct. And could that also be something that explains why the story is so different from the facts? It's a po uh, sure. It's a possibility that this just could be a false report, right? In the evidence that we gathered throughout the investigation, I don't believe so. If somebody came forward and gave you this story, you would still say that that's a credible person who gives you this story. That including everything else that we gathered in the investigation. When you, you interviewed Daniel Ramirez, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. You went into Mexico to interview him, correct? Uh, yes, ma'am. Why did you go into Mexico to interview him? Because Daniel couldn't cross into the United States legally. You could have called him on the phone, right? He doesn't have access to a phone. You could have arranged some sort of Zoom call, correct? He doesn't have access to internet. You could have spoken with Mexican officials to arrange something, correct? Correct. And you didn't do that, did you? No. You and Sheriff Hathaway crossed into Mexico to conduct a criminal investigation in Mexico, correct? Well, it was a witness statement, witness interview. Is taking a witness interview part of a criminal investigation? Sometimes. Was taking this witness interview part of a criminal investigation? Yes. So you conducted part of a criminal investigation in Mexico, correct? Correct. Mexico. All right, thank you very much. Redirect examination. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, so he says redirect. Okay, so that was cross. Um, I don't know what her point was, by the way, incidentally. Um, that it happened in Mexico. I don't, I don't understand her point. Um... You know, I I don't know all the laws that would relate to such things, but I can't think of any particular reason. I mean, obviously, it would have to be cool with the Mexican authorities, but, you know, as far as American law is concerned, I don't know why it matters that, that the interview of the witness happened in Mexico or not. I'm not sure why that matters. Incidentally, even if they illegally crossed into Mexico, I'm not even sure it's, le I'm not even sure it matters, but, uh, I digress. Yeah. So they, 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 that's not the point of the issue. Well, I don't know what the point of the issue is. That's why I'm saying, what do you think the point is? Can a state cop do an investigation in another country? I can't think of any reason why not. I, I can't think of any reason why not. I mean, again, you'd have to clear that with the local authorities, presumably, but I can't think of any reason why not. Jurisdiction, it has nothing to do with jurisdiction. The crime occurred in the state. There's no, it's not a jurisdiction issue. They're, they're conducting a witness interview. I don't. I don't know. I, okay, fucking whatever. Detective, um, defense counsel asked you a number of questions about the Celebrite download of the victim's phone. Do you recall that? Yes, ma'am. She asked you about text messages, correct? Yes, ma'am. And can you tell us, she asked you, were there other messages on the phone? I just want to make sure that redirect is limited in the same way that my cross-examination was limited. You can continue. And I'd like to make a proffer when we're done with this witness. You can continue. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, can you tell me, Detective, were there other picture, were there other text messages on the phone? Which phone are we talking about, Ms. Hunter? The victim's phone? Yes, there were. 
And can you tell us the nature of the other text messages you observed? Yes, yeah, so there were uh, two sets of uh, messages, messages threads, one on his uh, personal phone message, the, the inbox where you get from his phone number. And then he also had threads through an application called WhatsApp. Um, those applications from the WhatsApp threads were screenshotted by the um, investigator. So even assuming that it was illegal from the point of view of Mexico, I'm not sure it matters for the point of view of this trial. Right. So like if they went illegally into Mexico, as far as Mexico is concerned, I'm still not sure it matters from the perspective of this trial. I mean, I suppose it kind of speaks maybe to the officer's credibility in some sense, but I can't think of any, I can't think of any legal issue that's obvious from the American perspective about it. Right. So yeah, I, I don't know. Doesn't the defense have the same right to the same witness? In principle, sure. Uh, they could go down to Mexico too, I, I guess. Uh, not really. The t okay, the point is not the testimony. I'm, I'm trying to do a legal analysis. I'm trying to do a legal analysis if anything I see, because that's what I roll. That's how I roll. Um, if that's okay with you, I'd like to do a legal analysis of anything I can see. So, if that's all right with you. All right, great. The download, and they were placed on an individual, uh, individual file for me to review. And then those uh, WhatsApp uh, threads were a numerous amount of um, family pictures. He was involved as a, I believe he was a coach for his siblings or his um, kids, I'm sorry, uh, soccer team in, in uh, Mexico. So it was a group thread where they were exchanging um, uh, practice dates, uh, dates for the, for the games, uh, jerseys, etc. Were they also discussing some kind of upcoming tournament? Yes. Now the defense showed you a picture of the defendant and the and the download information. Is that right? Correct. And that was state defense exhibit triple I. Correct. Correct. And is that okay? So the, the 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 problem in the timing is the defense was limited, and this the state is not being limited in time. So yeah, that doesn't really work. Yeah, that doesn't really work. There, uh, yeah. If if she was cross, although, and she and they're redirect, then they should be limited. And this is just going on. That doesn't make any sense. So this the 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 case management here is not really working. Were you able to take a look at that image to determine? Um, whether that had any location data. Yes. Did it have any location data? It did not. When you took a look at the rest of the items that were on that Celebrite report, um, defense asked you if, to speculate about what this picture depicted. Do you remember that? Correct. And based on what, you, what else you observed on the cell phone, is there anything else on that cell phone that gives you an idea what this um, photograph is about? Objection, yeah. relevance. We tried to introduce other photos from the cell phone and the court didn't let us do it, so I, I don't think- The question the was directed to this particular photo, which is in evidence, the objection's overruled. Um, well, if I remember correctly, that the date on that picture is on the 21st of January, 2023. A few days prior to that, there's a video uh, January 18th of 2023, where you can hear uh, Mr. Wittimea, uh speaking with a group. Wait, 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 wait. Without the, the question us, was about the photograph. We're not getting yes. into anything else. Without telling us what, what folks said, were you able to ascertain from the video what was happening? Yes. What was it? Again, again the question, I thought the question was, what can he ascertain 
about this from looking at this photo, right? Judge, the question was, the defense asked this witness to speculate what this photograph was about, and this witness observed within a couple of days of this photograph other video that put this in context. And so that's why I'm asking the witness this question. And that was specific to the defense's question to and this witness. Does the defense have that? Does the defense have that? That they, other video? they do, Judge. It's all on the cell right. I haven't been able to see the video, Judge. There was some description of a video in Detective Barba's report. We weren't able to find that on the cell right. All right. Let's move on to another topic. Just to follow up with the defense's question. Are there any other things when you look at this that you think might be a possibility with respect to what you observed based on what the defense asked you? Yes, um, with the binoculars that he was wearing, I believe that he might have been hunting. You were asked about your conversation with the medical examiner's office. Is that right? Correct. Do you even remember who you spoke to at the medical examiner's office? I do not. And if Dr. Tim testified it wasn't her, do you believe that? How, how, is this, how is this within the scope of the cross? It doesn't appear to be within the scope of the cross. When did she, when did she ask questions about that during her four minutes? I heard something about a body and its location and a direction and a distance. And I don't remember medical. Uh, how, how is this within the scope? What you can't, that doesn't make sense. That's not what redirected. What the, I don't understand what's going on. It doesn't yet. That's not what you can't do that. <sighs> that she was accurate? Yes. Did you write the, doc the documentation that's in the medical examiner's report? I did not. When did we talk about a medical examiner's report to Wayne Cross? Or anything that could be said to be referential to the medical examiner's report? When did that come up? We're just doing a second direct now. Oh, Lord. Were you providing that information very early on in this case? Yes. Was that before you even attended the autopsy? That's correct. Did you have any opportunity to review that documentation prior to it going into the medical examiner's report? I did not. Um, have you ever had an opportunity to determine whether it was accurate? No, the, when it was presented to me yesterday was the first time I saw it. Is the, are there some things in that documentation that are inaccurate? Yes. Do you recall what the items are that are inaccurate? I would have what the fuck are we talking about right now? Uh, I mean, okay, look. All right. I, I hate to go back to basics, but look, okay. A, a redirect is not an opportunity to just ask any questions you want. That's what direct is for direct you can ask anything that's relevant that's what it is right you can ask anything now in most jurisdictions the scope of cross is limited but apparently in this jurisdiction the scope of cross is unlimited so okay i guess if that's the way they roll then fine but either way whether the scope of cross is limited which is the normal rule although to be fair a lot of judges ignore it out of preference, which, you know, fair enough, as long as they're consistent. So, like, a lot of judges kind of ignore that and be like, I don't care if I get it, it's fine. So, but, you know, either way, like, whatever the rule is, either in, in principle or reality, right? In principle or reality, if cross is limited in principle slash reality or cross is unlimited in principle slash reality, the point of the redirect is to deal with what was dealt with on cross. It's not a second direct. It's a rehabilitation, right? Because the cross has poked holes in the witness, right? And so the point of the redirect is to deal with the things that were brought up 
on cross so that I can rehabilitate those things from your pesky, pesky questions. It's not a free for all. And the prosecution is asking about medical examiner's reports, which has nothing even remotely to do with anything the defense mentioned on cross. The, cro the, def the entire cross, because it was four minutes long, we listened to it, was here's a map. Is it true that this is, you know, 300? Is this true that this is 130 yards away? Is it true that this is a mile and a half? Is it true it was this direction? Is it true that you did an interview of the witness in Mexico? That was the that was the entirety of the cross. How the hell does a medical examiner's report and whether or not he had the opportunity to deal with a medical examiner's report and whether or not the medical examiner's report is accurate and whether he knows that, how does it have to do anything with anything even vaguely related to what she just said on cross just now? It doesn't. So what what the what the hell is going on? This th this is not how this is not what a redirect is. Uh, I I were just and the judge was just bitching at the start of this whole thing about how the state is consuming so much time. And now he's letting the state just eat more time. In a way that defies the rules incidentally. So it's like, it's unfair on multiple different levels. It, it, yeah, it's, it, it, that, that, doesn't, that doesn't work. That, that doesn't work. To refresh my recollection of the document. Do you know who declared um, the Mr. Butimea deceased? I believe it was Deputy Lopez. Okay, so you be, that's your belief from what you learned that night, is that correct? Correct. I want to ask you about some questions the defense asked you with respect to This is how the whole case has been? I believe you, but it shocks me because it doesn't make any sense. It, it, it doesn't make any sense because it fundamentally defies what it is. <laughs> it fundamentally defies what it is right the the whole like the whole idea about whether cross is limited either by rule or by reality is like normally it's limited by rule like but a lot of judges are like i don't care and the reason they don't care is in the name of efficiency which goes back to the idea of trial management okay because by strict letter of the rule in most jurisdictions the scope of cross is limited to the scope of the direct. You can't ask questions that go beyond direct. The reason that that's the standard, that the reason that's the rule is because you have the power to bring up the witness yourself in your own case, right? So you, because, because strictly speaking, strictly speaking, there's no such thing as a government witness or a defense witness. There's no such thing as a plaintiff witness or a defense witness. That's strictly speaking, not a thing. We, we sometimes talk about that for shorthand, but strictly speaking, that's not a thing. The, every, the, the, we talk about every man's evidence, right? The, the evidence belongs to everybody. That's one of the reasons, incidentally, we have disclosure by the state, for example, to the defense, because, well, the, the evidence doesn't belong to anybody. It belongs to everybody. So that, you know, that everyone can have a fair trial and so forth and so on, right? So normally, in most jurisdictions, like it's limited by rule and cross because you can bring it up yourself in direct. You can call the witness. Now, a lot of judges are like, you know what? That's just inefficient. That's just, that's just inefficient, right? I mean, it's like, come on. Especially if you have a trial that's going on for a couple weeks. Because, you know, maybe this, maybe this state's witness, you know, talk, talked two weeks ago. And now the, the defense is going to recall them two weeks later. You know, it's like, that's just inefficient. I was like, I can't. Yeah, it's just inefficient. So it's like, you know what? Screw it. Screw it. You can have unlimited cross. And, you know, so you're trading the fact that basically this person gets to ask essentially direct questions using leading format. But you're trading it for the idea of efficiency. So fine. 
But like the, the point of a redirect is not to have a second direct. It's to deal with whatever the cross is. And now we're just having a second direct. So like, shouldn't I be able to cross again? Because, well, if the redirect is unlimited, shouldn't I be able to have an unlimited recross? And if I can, when does this end? When does this end, right? Because, like, wait a second, right? If your redirect is unlimited, then I get unlimited. And then you get to redirect that again, so it's unlimited again. And cross is unlimited again. That doesn't sound very efficient. What the hell are we doing here? <laughs> um, that's the samples that you were provided, that you provided to RJ Lee Group. And I want to make sure I understood some of your testimony. Um, the defense, when they were asking you those questions yesterday, asked you if all of the sample went into the same vial. Gary in chat says, why would there ever be a recross? That's a really good question. We don't see it all the time, to be fair. It is a bit unusual. Some some judges don't really like it at all. I'll tell you what, if I ever get on the bench, like recross is just, no, that's not happening. So object for scope and like, no, we're just not doing that. We're not doing recross because this has got to end. This has got to end. But yeah, uh, some judges are better about it than others. Some judges let it ping pong back and forth for a while because they're pussies. <laughs> and they're unwilling to put proper boundaries on the thing. And then it's inefficient and it's a very frustrating thing. So, you know, okay, pressing on. At least that's how I understood the question. Is that how you collected the information, the data? Each the sample went into an individual vial. And so you had how many separate vials? Five. And so when you collected from each item, each one went into its own vial, is that right? That's correct. All right, thank you very much. Any questions for this witness from members of the jury? We do. So this is a recalled witness. So like, why? Um, by the state, the state recalled their own witness. That's typically not allowed either. Unless like something extraordinary happens, but that's typically not allowed either. You know, you can recall them in a, uh, in your in your uh, rebuttal case but you can't recall your own witness usually in your own case usually you don't usually that's not allowed so the state was allowed to recall its own witness because why and then the defense was denied the opportunity to like okay i, I don't know what the hell's going on things things are just messed up here they recalled like three of their LEOs. Why? <laughs> it's like, you know, you got to justify that one. What's your justification for, you know, recalling this witness at this time? Okay. We've had first, te we've had one testimony, yes. But what about second testimony? And the judge has the temerity to to chastise the the parties for the case taking so long. Because their case is going badly, that's not a good enough reason. That's not a that's not a valid reason. 
because you're my because my case because because it's devastating to my case is not a real reason. <laughs> Why do you want to recall this witness? Because if I can't, Your Honor, well, it's devastating to my case. Well, that sounds like a you problem. <laughs> Woo! You know, not for nothing, but fair is supposed to be a bit of a four-letter word when it comes to the Constitution, at least in principle. The deck, the deck is somewhat deliberately stacked in favor of the defense. Now, how true that is in reality, one can question, but like the deck is stacked for the defense. The defense gets disclosure of the state stuff, Brady, the state gets, the defense gets the ability to use Miranda. You know, the state, the defense has due process. State doesn't get due process. The defense gets due process. The state, the defense gets the ability to confront witnesses against them. The state doesn't have that guarantee uh, the, by the Constitution. So, like, you know, if this just because the things are sucking for the state, it's like, you know, well, that's unfortunate. You know, I don't know what to tell you. I guess it's just not going well for you. Maybe you should have tried harder. Oh, well. Yeah, they're caucusing about something now. They have the headsets on, so they're talking amongst themselves. They got the headsets on to, 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 to do a little uh, color commentary. We got John Madden here with the headsets on. Well, you see, the thing is, if they want to win the game, they got to make a few more touchdowns. You know, they really should pass the ball to the other player and, you know, th then they can get it to the end zone. You know, this is, a, this is an opportunity for the team here to make a first down. If they don't make a first down, you know, the ball's going to go the other end of the player. And they, you know, that's going to be really hurtful for their chances to come along. Thanks, John. That's great. The headsets approach to um, the headsets approach to uh, approaching the bench does have some appeal to me. I have to be honest. I'm not opposed to that, right? So instead of like we're all going to get up and talk on the bench, the headsets to do sidebars. I I'm not. I I I think that's an in that's an interesting solution. Although it makes everyone look really stupid, but you know, that's okay. A couple of questions from the jurors for the witness. Um, question, why was a hotel in Nogales, Sonora, Mexico chosen to interview the witness at, instead of at the U.S.-Mexico port of entry or the Mexican consulate building? So um, I, I believe this part of, of that incident didn't get clarified. Um, we weren't in a room in the hotel. We were in the public area of the restaurant of the hotel. And um, subsequent to that, we moved to a lounge that was empty at the time, however, so accessible, accessible to the public. Um, the reason why we moved from the restaurant to the, lo to the lounge was because the restaurant was um, busy. <clears throat> there were a lot of individuals uh, consuming in the restaurant. We went over to the lobby and we chose that place was because it was a little bit more um, less uh, noisy, less crowded, and it allowed us to do the interview more appropriately. And the question was directed towards why why wasn't uh, why weren't alternative locations of either the port of entry or the Mexican consulate used? The the location was uh, chosen by Sheriff Hathaway, and I was under his direction. Second, qu another question from the same juror: Why was only part of this meeting recorded? So um, the recording was a decision made by Sheriff Hathaway. Um, when I conducted the meeting with Daniel, um, I just took notes about our conversation. The reason why I decided to do that was because this was a highly publicized um, case. Um, I didn't want to bring any unwanted attention towards us that could contaminate the interview. 
um, because recording somebody in public when you're sitting down is uncommon, so it's going to bring some, some eyes to us, and they're going to start wondering, what are you guys doing? And I didn't want those extra eyes um, contaminated. All right. Um, there'll be, there may be follow-up questions by the lawyers to these questions. Questions from another juror. You stated you received a handgun, cell phone, and a magazine from Sergeant Lopez upon arrival at the Kelly, Kelly residence with the service of the first search warrant. How were these items obtained? Was there a warrant for these items prior to arrival in the jurisdiction? I'm just trying to make myself make sure I'm clear. Um, yes, the items were documented on the warrant, and they were just transferred um, uh, from hand to hand. Deputy Lopez had collected them, and then he gave them to me. All right, so they were obtained pursuant to a search warrant. That's my belief, so yes. Another question, if you know, um, in earlier testimony, Sergeant Rodriguez confirmed a photo he had taken of a single footprint at the scene, and there have been other testimonies we confirmed that there were no other signs of foot traffic around the body. Yet there has been testimony by witnesses there. In your opinion, how is that possible? So I, the question really is, a single footprint, footprint was found, but there's been testimony of a lot of other foot traffic in the same area. Um, how is it possible that only one footprint was found, if I understand, if you know, if I, if I understand the question correctly? So I was not part of the collection of the body or the inspection of the surroundings. So I wouldn't be able to testify whether there was or there wasn't. And uh, that would be my answer. All right, final question from another juror. Was the geofence warrant executed in June? Or did Google go back chronologically to January 30th? Yeah, so when I served the warrant to Google, um, I set a specific time date, um, time on the warrant from uh, January 29th to, I believe it was February 1st. So it went back to that time frame. Very well. Hand the questions to the clerk. Follow up questions to the questions from the jurors by the state. Do you have any idea why the restaurant was chosen as opposed to other locations? I know you indicated that the serge, that the sheriff picked it. I, I don't know. Was it was the area quiet enough where you were that you were able to conduct the interview? Yes. I think that's all I had, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Larkin. Just to be clear, you did not understand that Sheriff Hathaway had involved any officials from the Mexican government before conducting this investigation in Mexico, correct? Not to my knowledge. And did you, you didn't think it was odd at all that you were going into Mexico to conduct this investigation? Well, to my understanding and what was explained to me, um, it wasn't anything out of the ordinary. Um, he has a lot of background with DEA and they do that often. Um, they typically have authority to do that, correct? I'm not a federal agent, so I'm not sure what they have authority or don't have authority. All right. When you interviewed Daniel in Mexico, you did not record it, right? But right. then Sheriff Hathaway did record a portion of this after you had spoken with Daniel, correct? Well, it was immediately, it, it was not like there was a break in between. It was kind of immediately. So you spoke with Daniel for what, 40 minutes or so, right? right. And then Sheriff Hathaway. I, I'm, la I'm laughing because the uh, scope of the questions responsive to the jurors' questions is now longer than they were allowed in the first place. <laughs> uh, fine times. We recorded the next six minutes of that interview, correct? Correct. And you stated that you don't record, in, or you didn't record this interview because you were concerned about privacy, correct? Correct. But Sheriff Hathaway went ahead and recorded the interview, correct? Correct. So he wasn't, he didn't share your concerns, correct? Correct. Is it standard practice to do an interview and only record a small portion of that interview? That's not standard practice, right? No. Did this, did Daniel, did he ever tell you that his last name was really Varela? I don't, I don't recall. 
Okay, you never noted in your report that his last name could possibly be Varela, right? No. And also present at that interview were two yeah, I, I like I like how she's just continuing her cross. I respect that. I respect that. I'm waiting for the judge to get mad. He looks like he's about to get mad. I, it looks like he's about to get it looks like he's about to get mad. Uh, also, um, at what point did the Attorney General of the United States become a state judge in the state of Arizona? I'm just just curious about that. When did when did Merrick Garland resign being a being the Attorney General in order to uh, be a state judge in uh, Arizona? I'm just saying members of Gabriel, correct? That's correct. And some guy by the name of Juan Carlos Rodriguez, correct? Right. You didn't look into him at all, did you? Well, he was identified as the uncle and the facilitator of the, of the interview. That's what he told you, right? And the daughters confirmed the rel that he was a relative. You didn't confirm that independently, right? Correct. I don't have anything else, Judge. Thank you. Any other questions for this witness from any members of the jury? Seeing none, thank you, sir. You can step down, and the state can please call your next witness. Can I call yeah. State calls Agent Tercy. Okay, the prosecution then called in question the next witness for 30 minutes. Okay. The defendant, right? Ms. Wanda Kelly and the defendant, right? That's correct. Uh, it um, sounds like you're going to move into a new area right now. Is that right? So uh, it's a good time to take our mid-morning break. Is that all right? It's 945. Uh, we're going to take about a 20-minute break. I'll stay here with the lawyers. We'll come back about 10.05, uh, depending on how long this takes for me to talk to them. We'll be in recess until about 10.05. Thank you. Excuse, excuse the jury. Thank you. Please be seated. <clears throat> the record show the absence of the jury. Ms. Larkin, you said you wanted to make an offer of proof concerning uh, Detective Barba. You can do so. The court reporter and the clerk will remain in the courtroom to record your, your offer of proof. Judge, in a, can you hear me? Oh, okay. So, cool. in addition to obtaining testimony about the false report provided by Ramon, the cross-examination... The judge doesn't want to even hear the offer of proof. He doesn't, he doesn't want to hear the offer of proof. That's, uh, that's a choice, I guess. <laughs> that's a choice. I was going to continue to explore inconsistencies between Ramon and Daniel in terms of the inconsistencies that they made with each other as well as inconsistencies that their statements were with the physical evidence. Um, the cross-examination was going to further explore the interview that took place with Daniel in Mexico, including exploring inconsistent statements between what he told investigators in that interview and what he testified to in trial in this case. Um, that interview is going to continue to explore the fact that Daniel provided fa a false name to law enforcement in this case. And the cross-examination would also go into 
generally the shell casing testing that was ordered, the forensic testing that could have been ordered, the forensic testing that was not ordered, and further exploring the double standard between the way these so-called witnesses were evaluated versus the way that Mr. Kelly was evaluated, and the cross-examination would continue to explore the inadequacy in this investigation in terms of interviewing people who came forward, who placed themselves at the crime scene as possible suspects. That's it. Wait a minute. And we, we just want to make a further record. Sorry, Denise. You okay? <laughs> make a further record that the fact that our cross-examination was significantly limited violates Mr. Kelly's right to confrontation of these witnesses and due process. Yep. There you go. Yep. Thank you. Yep. I, I feel it. I feel the frustration. Yeah, I feel it. Yeah, even the, even the prosecution looks a bit uncomfortable. They should. Honest, honestly, the prosecution should have objected themselves to to be because the officer. Because I mean, of course, the prosecution. Just as a friendly reminder. They do have special rules of ethics that just apply to them, that do not apply to the defense. Because the prosecution is supposed to seek justice, not convictions, remember? So when the judge limited the defense's cross, the prosecution really should have objected as well, uh, to be quite fair. So, you know, could have, could have gone better. So I understand... Is it my understanding that at some point the judge came back at some time and, and, and said some things in court to undo or modify this or otherwise try to salvage this shit show? And if so, where can we find that video? Because I'd like to tack that on to this shit show. Um, yeah, that's pretty bad, by the way. It's, it's given what we've seen in this, it, it, it doesn't seem that it comports with due process or the right of confrontation as I would understand it. Um, I will note, by the way, uh, there is one case I'm aware of, and it's been a long time since I've read it, but there was one case where they tried the chess clock thing for a criminal case. I don't think we've ever seen that before. We've seen the chess clock thing for civil cases. We saw it, of course, perhaps most famously in, in Johnny Depp, but, um, we, we saw the chess clock thing where each side is assigned a fixed amount of time. And as, as I have, not until the following Monday, I'll take it. I'll take the following Monday. That's fine. I'll, I'll take the following Monday. So if you, can, if you can share with me on Discord where that video is and give me a timestamp or something, I'd, I'd appreciate it. We'll pick it up on Monday. We'll pick it up from Monday. I'll, I'll take it. Um, but uh, in any event, as I was saying... Um, We've seen the chess clock thing where each side is limited, uh, is provided a fixed amount of time. And I'm aware of at least one appeal where a trial judge tried the chess clock thing in a criminal case. And as I remember it, because it's been a while since I read it. Um, yeah, it's been a while since I've read it. Um, the defense burned through all their time. And then the judge said, well, because you've burned through all your time, you're not allowed to, like, talk anymore. So the the there were witnesses called. I, I As memory serves, I think they burned through all their time. It must have been. They burned through all their time in the state's case, I guess. Um, and then the, the judge denied them the ability to cross-examine. Or maybe it was during uh, rebuttal testimony. Maybe that was the thing. Maybe that was the thing. But in either case, the judge denied them the ability to do any more cross. And I think denied them the ability to do a closing argument. And in that particular case, the Court of Appeals um, said that that was an error. Um, some people are saying he did see it and some people are saying they didn't see it. Say it. 
So again, the fact, the dispute of fact, I love it. You guys can't, you can't, you can't agree. Um, but in any case, the Court of Appeals said because of the due process guarantee and because of the right to confront the witnesses, that it was an error for the, for the court, the trial court, to completely cut off the defendant's ability to ask questions. But that court, at least in that decision, seemed to heavily imply that they didn't need to allow for very much in order to comply with due process. So, so, I mean, that's one decision, I think, by one court. But that court seemed to, seemed to imply that if they had left it only for a couple of questions, that would have comported with due process because it was the defense who forced themselves into that situation because they were the ones that burned their clock. So if they had just given them a couple questions, it would have been sufficient. But because they gave them nothing, it was error. So, yeah. So, so where is this video of the judge doing a 180? Where can I find that? I'm going to Discord to see if you guys have it. I don't see anything in Discord right now, so I'll give you guys a couple minutes. Yeah, acted like nothing happened and did a complete 180. Was were they allowed? Was he allowed to? Was, was the defense allowed to do the cross examination they wanted to do? Did he allow them to do the cross examination? He denied them in the first place. Then you know if that's what happened, then you know okay. He never does a 180. Some people say he did do a 180. Some people people say he didn't do a 180. You can't confirm it exists? Yeah. So if the judge does reverse himself, it might be sufficient because the judge can reverse their own rulings. And so if the judge does do a, you know, my bad, you know, thing and allow the defense to do their cross, then, you know, maybe. So, yesterday was a complete change and basically said they had all the time they need now. Did, did they recall, did they recall the uh, detective for the uh, cross-examination? They're like, okay, in that case, we want to recall the detective to complete our cross-examination. Did they do that? That would be good. So the, so the judge did reverse himself. So the judge did reverse himself. Okay. Fair enough. So if the judge reversed himself, that might be enough to avoid the error from the court of appeals, because it because if they if they allow the if they allow the 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 defense the ability to cross examine, then it would cure the error. Rob, uh, give me more information regarding your GoFundMe on Discord, and we can consider it at another time. Um, but um, I'm not going to post it in this one because I have to vet it, as I'm sure you can appreciate. The state rested and we're on to defense. No. So... Defense crushed the state's final witness? Or if that's cool. They crossed the shit out of the lead detective? I'd like that. I'd like that. Where can I... Would, would someone post the link for that in my Discord, please? Post me the appropriate timestamp. That'd be great if someone could share it in my Discord so that I could pull it up. I'd appreciate it. I, I you don't have discord and you want me to do you a favor but you're not on my discord yeah I'm not particularly inclined
That bothers me. That perhaps bothers me more than it should, but I'm just saying my own faults. You come into my chat and you ask me if I can post a link to your GoFundMe. And then I give you an opportunity to say, okay, why don't you message me on Discord and we'll look it over and you say, but I don't have Discord. I, I, I feel insulted. All right, well, since no one has posted me a link, I have no idea where to go look, so I will have to conclude the stream because I, I, I don't know where it is, and I, I, I don't know what it is, and I'm not going to go try to figure it out on the fly because I, I'm not going to go mess around with it. So, uh, you know, um, I guess that will conclude the stream. So uh, thank you, I suppose, for turning in. I'm sorry that we were unable to follow anything more, but, you know, um, I, I don't have the information, so we can't do anything more. All right. Thank you very much for all you being part of here. I hope you enjoyed our presentation. I've been on civil law. Until later, my friends, I hope all is well. Cheers, my friends, and goodbye.